Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Reflection on the Rock here at Covenant United Methodist Church. Uh, This evening, we're going to be looking at uh, scripture from uh, the book of Acts. So if you want to grab your Bibles, uh, we'll direct you to the right uh, verses here in a little bit. But it's, uh, it's it's a familiar passage and one we're going to actually pair with some scripture readings that we're going to have for Sunday. So we're, and this is all previewing uh, the gospel lesson on the walk to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. So we'll figure out how this idea of baptism and um, awakening and everything is going to hopefully somehow tie together by Sunday. If it doesn't, we'll leave it up to the spirit. Exactly. So, but we're going to begin this evening with um, the song, Child of Blessing. There's been a a prayer that during the Sunday worship service that we've been reading as a a habit um, prior to the the reading of the scripture and before the word. And it's out of the um, United Methodist Church's book of worship. And it's called A Prayer for Illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read, and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to Acts chapter 2, as we did last week. We're going to start yeah. with verse 14a, as we did last week, yeah. which really just tells us that Peter got up and started, started talking. talking. Um, and then verse 36 on for five verses. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, Mm -hmm. to be both Lord and Messiah. Mm -hmm. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins Mm -hmm. and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Mm -hmm. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. This promise is to you and to your children and to those far away all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a A long long time, time. (laughs) strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. I can remember some long sermons in my day, but this one probably Sound like took it, the best. Yeah, time. exactly. Yeah. Well, there was one thing in, in Bible study um, that we talked about on this walk to Emmaus. Jesus enlightens them with going back all the way to Moses yes. and the prophets and all mm-hmm. the scripture that... Um, and, and then it just says, oh, and then the next sentence is, well, they appeared where they were going and it, they arrived. And it was like, wait a minute. I want to know what Jesus said. Yeah. What what enlightening thing did, did yeah. Jesus reveal? It sounds, it sounds a little like the uh, the Easter vigil, um, yeah. the night before yeah. Easter, when they go through the uh, way, all the way from Genesis uh-huh. up, just to remind people where we've come from. Yeah. Well, I think Peter does this. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. It goes on for mm-hmm. a long time, but he it does. doesn't really say what um, he said. Mm-hmm. But I think I have a clue. But first, I, I have to get rid of this. Um, okay, I just have to get it out of there. 
and take it out of my head. So I am going to dismiss this little part of uh, the scripture. Let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. Oh, yes, that anti-Semitism thing. That, it's accusatory. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does. It just sows seeds of um, the wrong kinds of thoughts mm -hmm. in people's heads. And at this point, it's a distraction. Of course, if we, if we didn't read it, whom you crucified, yeah. um, we c it could be more inclusive. Because well, he's talking to a large crowd of people. He doesn't know who's out there. Right. Um, and if he, maybe he just said, this same Jesus whom you crucified, and he's comparing crucifixion with, with. resurrection. Yeah. Well, I'm moving it off, Move to, it the off side. to the side. Um, because I think what the most important thing that I read into mm -hmm. this, um, actually his sermon, uh, or his letter, I mean, uh, is to pull us away from the, this distraction, pulls us away from the main thing, which is to love yeah. others with all our hearts. Oh. Yes. And um, huh. so it sounds like Peter, again, goes on to preach for a long time, strongly urging his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. Mm. So one, we don't know, but who is Peter preaching to? Mm -hmm. Are they already believers? Are they seekers? Are mm. they naysayers? Um, and it was probably a little bit of Everything. all of them, mm -hmm. yeah. So it got me thinking, okay, so what did pre he preach about for a really long time? And the letter that we read on Sunday is what gives, mm. I think, is what his sermon was about. Um, somehow he convinces 3,000 people to mm. be baptized. And um, he writes this letter years later, God shows no partiality. Mm. Uh, live in reverent fear of God. So as this sermon is going on and preaching and preaching, because if God shows no partiality, you then neither, neither should we. To live in reverent awe or fear of God's ability to be impartial. Mm -hmm. Wow, if God can be that impartial, why not me? Wow. God mm -hmm. paid the price for your salvation through the precious blood of Jesus. And you know, we hear that and hear that. Mm -hmm. But I think in that context, for especially for the Jews, that would have meant that Jesus, the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. was without defect mm -hmm. or blemish. Mm -hmm. And that would have been that meaningful um, analogy for yes, that for in that context. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he uses, um, uh, of course, I, don't, I did not go back to the Greek and the Hebrew, Hebrew for this word, but God chose the Son as our ransom. Oh. And there's this whole the theory of atonement on this ransom theory that this debt was paid. Um, uh, some, a ransom is something paid for the freedom of captive persons. And mm. for Peter, God paid um, for the freedom of all sinners through this precious blood of Jesus. Now, Peter keeps going on and on. Through Jesus, you have trust in God. You're cleansed of sin when you obey the truth. So he goes on and on about in the letter mm -hmm. that he would have expanded even more. And these people are listening. It's making sense. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of, um, of salvation in these, in these words that um, was done on on my or their behalf, our mm -hmm. behalf. Mm -hmm. But he closes it with, love each other deeply with all your heart because you have been born again into a life that will last forever. Ah. So all of these things that Peter's preaching about to the people, um, it, it would have taken a long time to mm -hmm. preach and really kind of flush all that mm -hmm. out. And those who listened Mm -hmm. again from Sunday, were cut to the heart. Mm -hmm. And they welcomed the message. Mm -hmm. And he and Peter urges them, repent, S start a new life, be baptized, and um, 
And he adds these, you know, I think 3,000, who knows, but a, a lot of people, mm -hmm. probably more people than I've baptized in my whole career. Mm -hmm. but. And so this book of Acts is almost like a, a, um, a church growth uh, <laughs> manual, <laughs> you know, and, it's, and the details of what's being said or, or preached are left um, really up to the epistles. The Acts is let's grow the church. And from Paul going down to the river oh, and mm -hmm. um, with the women, with yeah. make the purple cloth, everything. Mm -hmm. So church growth, though, meant something different in Peter's day mm -hmm. than what it means today. It doesn't mean vitality and bigger budgets and bigger buildings. It's meant to increase those who were called to love one another deeply. Mm -hmm with all their hearts, to obey God's truth, to be born again into a life that will last forever. Wow. And I was reading every week, um, our district superintendent, uh, Reverend Ted Anderson, he puts out a little missive in the e-news. Mm -hmm. And this week, um, he gave us another way to kind of look at how Peter, possibly what he might have said in that long talk. Um, and parts of it were, were these words. Why did God come to earth in human form? Emmanuel, God with us. What does the resurrection mean? Eternal life, abundant life, hope. Jesus rose to show us the love of God. Mm. It is amazing that God's grace or love is already ours even before we ask. Mm -hmm. God loves us unconditionally and waits for our response. Yes. Very patiently, very, mm -hmm. our, again, a responsive thing. Mm -hmm. So here is our response according to Ted Anderson, to live the good news of Jesus and to be God's love with our neighbors in all places. Mm. And that's really Peter's he goes about it in a very long roundabout way, but when we get right down to it, um, it moves people. Mm -hmm. I think an honesty and a sincerity in sharing one's faith, not by scaring somebody to death or being accusatory, but just revealing in, in our own words what a life of faith means. Mm -hmm. It's joy in the deepest recesses of our hearts, it's sharing it, as you said on uh, Wednesday, and it's just being grateful. Mm -hmm. It's living a grateful life. Yeah. And it's very appealing because um, the world is very much the geared opposite. to be <laughs> just the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that's what makes Jesus' followers, um, I don't want to say special, but different, mm -hmm. that we do live by mm -hmm. a different code. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that's how we grow the church. It's not through bigger budgets and, and everything else. We, we, we bring people in to share the joy and to discover a life of, of gratitude. Right. The secret right. to happiness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, I had an, when, when I was reading it, I thought the, um, what, what really struck me was that to save yourselves from this crooked Crit generation. generation. Uh -huh. It wasn't save yourself so you'll go to heaven sometime in the future. Right. It was here, Interesting. here and now. Yeah. And that, as you were talking there, I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is all really about being different, about being countercultural, not to be part of the perverse and crooked generation right, that right. we live in. Um, but to to live as Jesus people is is to be living a new life yeah yeah love it sets you apart yeah great um well not all of us um are good at living the joy mm -hmm. or the love right. um and so for our prayer time we admit that mm -hmm. and we come to god just as we are yeah. it's an old favorite um for uh, many of you will remember billy graham oh rallies or whatever they were called um where they always had the altar call and they always had this piece of music um 
But if we can honestly um, turn to God, mm. um, just as we are, mm -hmm. out of that um, honest place, then we um, we're living in authentic integrity, yeah. Yeah. integrity lives of life. Uh -huh. I believe. Yeah. So let us be in a spirit mm. of prayer. Just as I am, without one plea except that, Jesus, your blood was shed for me, and that you bid me come to you. And so we come. We come before you, God, just as we are, warts and all. But we come also just as we were created. So we know that we can come beloved and free who, to be who we are, ready to come to become who you hope us to be. We come just as we are, some of us surrounded by pain Hurt, bloodshed of all sorts, children dying because the color of their skin doesn't fit the neighborhood, people dying because they rode into the wrong driveway. Mm -hmm. Oh God, especially in the face of so much recent shooting and abuse and injustice, our hearts cry out, enough. And the cry seems to echo uselessly mm. in empty hallways of power mm -hmm. to bring change. Mm -hmm. So we come, we come to you who really hears and offers us strength and encouragement for the journey toward justice. come just as we are, some of us weeping in grief for someone or something lost. And we come, we come to you who weeps with us, gently wipes our tears and holds our hands as we lament. come just as we are, burdened by whatever guilt we carry, but can barely name. We come just as we are, some of us excited with good news, thankful for gifts and blessings, and we come to you from whom all blessings flow. Grateful that you are the source of all good and the fountain of incredible grace. We come just as we are, living in a fog of violence and poverty in Rochester, asking us for us, for you to lift the fog and bring some clearer vision mm. to our city. Mm -hmm. And all of us come, come to rest in you. And all of us lift our voices, broken or joyous, together in prayer, daring to call you among many names, mm -hmm. our, our Father, Father in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from, from the time, time of trial, trial. and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So Sunday. Sunday, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at the walk to Emmaus, which you're gonna find in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. And then we're going to jump to Peter's letter the, from 1 Peter. We're still in chapter 1, verses 17 to 23, which I quoted quite a bit today, but mm -hmm. see how those two pair. Um, but as we were exploring those two scriptures on Sunday at Bible study, there's uh, a comment um, when Jesus vanishes and the companions say, you know, wasn't our hearts burning while mm. it was... You know, so there's something going on uh, mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. um, and spiritually in this mm -hmm. time. And then uh, church work days, this is t tomorrow. Um, we're going to be here at church in the morning till early afternoon doing quite a bit of cleanup work. We really, I said on Sunday, we could use 30 people, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. There's just a lot to do. We haven't had a deep clean of the church since before covid Actually, probably after the renovation was mm. the last time that we've really done a lot of that. So there's just there's things to do for all kinds of skill levels and ability levels. And, uh, you know, if any of you are electricians, uh, come on down because mm. we've just got some tidying up to do. So that will be Sunday. Great. Uh, Saturday, sorry. Uh, the benediction is a verse out of him called, uh, We Know That Christ Is Raised. And uh, it's not a, a real familiar one to me, but the lyrics were very good. And one of the verses uh, will send us out. A new creation comes to life mm. and grows mm. as Christ's new body takes on flesh and blood. Whoa. The universe restored and the whole will sing. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, great. Love it. Indeed. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Good night.